Hello, welcome back to my channel once again. Uh, this is uh, General Joker, and today uh, let's talk about the therapeutic modalities. Uh, this uh, topic is for the students who are taking the CA3 subject. So, this video uh, let's discuss the different uh, types of uh, punishment. Oh, we back in the earliest times no so let's start so therapeutic modalities so let's uh, start start first uh, uh, the historical perspective of corrections so first we have the 13th century the securing sanctuary in the 13th century uh, criminal could avoid punishment by claiming refuge in a church for a period of 40 days. So in the 13th century, century so the criminal uh, pwede sila maka-avoid of punishment by claiming refuge or uh, somebody no, from the church na claim the criminal and in the church dito sila a house or dito sila a uh, punish or a what we call that a correct, no? Dito, dito nila serve ang punishment within uh, 40 days. Uh, those times, kaya wala pa yung mga uh, institution, no? So, the next one is uh, we back 15, uh, 1576. Now, England ordered that each country should construct institution for the confinement of offender, which is popularly known as the English House of Correction or Bridewell style House of Corrections and Workhouses. So, pagka 1576, no, ang England nagpagawas og order nga dapat uh, kada nasod mag-construct og mga institution uh, for confinement of offender. It's because na nag-aanam na og kadaghan ang mga offender. So, kinahanglan na sila og dunay institution. So, ang ilang unang himo is kining Bridewell style House of Corrections. And then, in the 16th century, so transportation of criminals in England was authorized at the end of this century. Russia and European countries followed the system. Uh, pag 16th century, na also on transportation of criminals, it is because uh, nagkadaghan na ang mga offenders, no? which is dili na na kaya i-house, no? i-confine ang mga offenders so that's why uh, para ma uh, ma prevent no ang overpopulation sa mga uh, uh, confinement uh, facilities so ilang i transport into other uh, place no ang mga offenders but this practice no was abandoned in 1835 and next in the 18th century known as the age of enlightenment Additional jails were constructed due to decreasing opportunities for transportation of criminals to other countries and the elimination of the need of galley slaves. So, pag 18th century, gitawag niya og age of enlightenment because and dun na mga jails no ag construct due to decreasing of opportunities of transportation. So, nagkaanam siya og decrease ang opportunity no sa pagtransport of criminals. So, tungod kay nakadaghan na ang mga uh, offenders, no, mga inmates. So, the and need of galley slaves. Then, uh, gaols. We have gaols or jails. So, the description given to pre-trial detention facilities operated by English sheriff in England during uh, 18th century. So, ang jails, no, mo na sa niya na uso na po ang gitawag jails. Uh, in the 18th century nga dito na ang mga mauna ni ang mga facilities nga dito i-confine ang mga offenders which is operated by the English sheriff and nowadays, today, uh, we all know that uh, jails are operated by the BJMP or the Bureau of Jail and Management and Penology and galleys so long, long, narrow, single deck ships propelled by sails usually rolled by criminals so, a type of ship used for transportation of criminals in the 16th, 16th century. So, 
uh, way back 16th century, no, uh, nagamit mo sila ito galis. So, kini siya nga, kini galis, usan niya siya ka barko, no, single deck ships, nga propelled by sails. Meaning to say nga, uh, bugsay-bugsay ra, no, uh, bugsay-bugsay ra siya, and nagamit rin siya glayag, no. Ang, of course, ang mabugsay ani are those mga criminals, no. So, money ilang gigamit sa una in transportation of criminals money nga nga barko say by propelled by sails no nay layag unya para maka kog hangin modagan siya and of course road by criminals no bugsayan pud sa criminals so money nga gigamit nila and a mode of transportation we back 16th century so next we have the hooks no or gitawag ni siya floating hell so these are former worship used to house prisoners in the 18th and 19th century so kining gitawag floating hell no usa ni siya ka former barko ni siya warships so dire ang gihouse ang mga prisoners no uh, the hooks were intended only for a temporary solution so ila ni gigamit as temporary solution to a problem but when but they were not completely abandoned until 1855 80 years later so giabandon mo siya after 80 years ni nga uh, kaning nga gitawag floating hell or warships no as uh, a house to house a prisoners. So next one is we have the ordeal. So ordeal is the church substitute for a trial until 13th century, wherein guilt or innocent was determined by the ability of the accused of being unhurt through dangerous, painful test. So that's a uh, ordeal. So ang guilt to know so saka uh, uh, inmates or prisoners. Uh, was determined by the ability of the accused of being unhurt. So, and next one is we have the early codes, the Babylonian and Sumerian codes. So first is the key code of King Hamura, Habur, Hammurabi. So the Hammurabi known as the Hammurabi code. So ang Hammurabi code, man yung uh, Babylon created as the oldest code prescribing civil punishment. Pinaka oldest na siya ang code of Hammurabi, no? Uh, we back around 1759 BC, so before before Christ pa, siya na hatabo ng Kin Code of Hammurabi, Hammurabi Code. No? But in fact, Sumerian codes were nearly 100 years older. So napagide sa Sumerian, Sumerian Code. Mm -hmm. The main concept of Hammurabi Code is lixtaliones, no? which means an eye for an eye or a thought for a thought. So manang, uh, main concept sa Hammurabi Code. Yan ang ito, Lex Talionis. Then, next is the King or Namos Code. Decrease the imposition of prostitution and fines of execution, uh, mutilation, or other savage penalties. So, sa King or Namos Code, mo ni, uh, pa decrease no? ang imposition of mga restitution, mutilation, or other penalties. King or Namus code. Then uh, next is the Roman and Greek code. So ganina is mato ang uh, Hammurabi code. Then Roman and Greek codes. So kining Justinian code, uh, we back 529 AD, AD ano domini or after death or after Christ. So this code was a revision of 12 tables of Roman. However, the law did not survive due to fall of Roman Empire, but left a foundation of Western legal code. So, kini siya nga code, uh, wala po din siya naka-survive because of uh, the fall of Roman Empire. But ang naka -good, good thing lang ang nga code is naka-left siya foundation no, in Western legal codes. And 12 tables represented the earliest codification of Roman law incorporated into the Justinian code. So, then Greek code of Draco in Greece, a harsh code that provides the same punishment for both citizens and slaves. As it incorporates primitive concepts, the Greek uh, were the first to allow a citizen to prosecute the offender in the name of the injured party. Then next we have the Burganian code in 500 AD. Now, this code introduced the concept of restitution. This code is specified punishment according to the social class of offenders, dividing them into nobles, middle class, and lower class. 
and specifying the value of the life of each person according to social status. So, can you Bulgarian code uh, na mo specified na sa ang punishment no according sa ilang social class niya sa kanita ug noble, middle class and lower class. So diha nag-start sa Burganian code ang separation of uh, sa mga i-punish nga offenders or inmates. So next we have around uh, 509 BC, no? Before Christ, a law was passed prohibiting flag flagging or execute unless affirmed by the curiate assembly. So what is curiate assembly? No, was the principal legislative during the era of the Roman kingdom. So, in the during the uh, Roman kingdom, can curate assembly money ang principal legislative. While its primary purpose was to elect new kings, it also possessed uh, rudimentary legislative powers. Can you curate assembly? The next one we have the no uh, during the early cons uh, early concept of punishment. So the early concept of punishment rather. So, King Henry the Eighth no, uh, decreed corpor corporal punishment for big grants in 1531 and penal slavery in 1547 to defend the interests of the still dominant landlord. Then next we have Bridewell System Institution to so England established 1556 as workhouse for bigabonds, idlers, and rogues. It was a reform over the traditional unworkable system of punishment and it was Bridewell system. Then St. Bridewell uh, Bridget's Well, England first house of correction. So man ang uh, first na house of correction no in England can it was St. Bridget's Well. Next we have Finnish Act of 1779. So this act was passed and that mandates the establishment of a prison system based on solitary confinement, hard labor, and religious instruction. So, in the year of 1779, so, kini itong Penitentiary Act, so, di rin nag-start, no? Na, di mandates nila ang pag-establish o establish o prison institution na dapat, no? Based on solitary confinement, no? Hard labor and religious instruction. Then next, uh, Walnut Street Jail, so originally constructed as a detention jail in Philadelphia. So uh, in Philadelphia, no, they start the sad ang paghimo og detention jail. It, uh, it was converted into a state prison and become the first American pen penitentiary, ang ito, Walnut Street Jail. Then weeks next, uh, the Hospicio de San Michel. So the first home for delinquent boys of establishment. So uh, kini siyang hospicio de San Michel mo ni ang first nga katong mga boys no, mga youths for, for youths and he, he house ang mga youths uh, violators under 20 years of age no? It was built by Pope Clement the 6 in Rome no? for housing incorrigible youths. Then uh, next, uh, the pioneers for the age of enlightenment. So, mone sila mga pioneers sa time, no? The age of enlightenment. So, first is William Penn, around 1614 uh, to 1716. So, he is the first leader to prescribe imprisonment as correctional treatment to major offenders. Uh, he is also responsible for the abolition of death penalty and torture as a form of punishment. He fought for religious freedom and individual rights. So, can you see William Penn, mone siya first leader, no, nga, he prescribed na yun niya ang imprisonment as, or, as a correctional treatment or for major offenders, no. And responsible, he abolished po niya uh, ang death penalty and torture as a form of punishment. Then, can you see Charles Montesquieu, no? A French historian and philosopher who analyzed law as an expression of justice. He believed that harsh punishment would weaken morality and that appealing to moral sentiments as a better means of preventing crime. So next is Voltaire. Uh, uh, he believes that fear of shame was the deterrent of crime. No? He, fit, he fought the legality sanction practice of torture. So lahi sad ni ang kang Voltaire, no? Uh, ang iyang gusto is uh, uh, kinisang 
fear of shame no? was a deterrent to crime. The next, uh, John Howard, uh, around 1726 to 1790, the Great Prison Reformer. Can you see John Howard? No? Ita was a Great Prison Reformer because no? uh, the Sheriff of Bill Bedfordshire is in 1773, who he devoted in life and fortune to prison reform. After his findings in English prison, he recommended the following. So, money ang recommend ni John Howard. So, first is the single cell of, for sleeping, segregation uh, of women, segregation of youths, provision of sanitation facilities, and the abolition of the fee system in which jailers ob, ob, obtain money from prisoners. So, money ang recommendation ni John Howard, which is to separate no, the prisoners no, or the segregation. So, nindot said ni siya nga idea ni John Howard. And next is uh, Robert Peel. Sir Robert Peel in 1821, Peel was appointed as Home Secretary and immediately set about reforming the criminal code and applying Howard principles to local prisons. So, iyang gi uh, ang kang Howard nga idea, ang principle iyang gi uh, implement no in to up in local prisons. The next uh, Cesar Bicaria. No? He wrote an essay entitled An Essay on Crimes and Punishment. Uh, this book became famous as the theoretical basis for the great reforms in the field of criminal law. This book also provided a starting point for the classical school of criminal law and criminology. So, can you see uh, Cesar Bicaria? So, advocate ni siya sa classical school of criminal law and criminology. The next, uh, Jeremy Bintam uh, in 1748 to 1832, the greatest leader in the reform of English criminal law. So he believes that whatever punishment designed to negate whatever pleasure or gain the criminal derives from crime, the crime rate would go down. Monasad ang uh, kang Jeremy Bintam. Then he devised the ultimate panopticon prison, you know, a prison that consists of a large circular building containing multi cells around the uh, periphery, 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 but it was never built. No? So, money ang nindot unta ang idea ni Jeremy Bintam, but wala lang siya na realize. Uh, uh, next one is Alexander Makanoche. He is the superintendent of a penal colony at Norfolk Island in Australia in 1840. So, kini si Alexander Makanoche mo ni siyang nag-introduce sa Mark system. No? A progressive human system in which a prisoner is required to earn a number of marks based on proper department, lab labor, and study in order to in uh, entitle him for a ticket for leave or a con uh, conditional release which is similar to parole. So, uh, uh, during his time, no, ang introduced ni Alexander Makanoche is kining mark system, which is maka-earn ang uh, mas daghan og marks na ma-earn ang mga ang prisoners, no, so matagaan sila og uh, ticket for leave, no, maka or release conditional release. So nowadays, no, uh, to ang program nga siya is uh, kining ito og parole. The next we have the Makanoche mark system consists of five stages. So do na po five stages. So first is a strict custody upon admission to the penal colony, then work on government gangs, limited freedom on the island within prescribed area, ticket of leave, and full restoration of liberty. So many among the stages, summer system ni uh, Alexander Makanochi. Then next I have uh, Manuel Montesinos, so director of prison in Valencia, Spain, uh, who divided the number of prisoners in the companies and appointed certain prisoners as PT officers in charge which allowed good behavior to prepare the convict for gradual release. Then Domits of France so established an agricultural colony for delinquent boys in 1839, providing house fathers as a, uh, in charge of these boys. So next, uh, Saint Bryce, Sir Villain Ruggles. The director of English prison who opened the Burstall Institution for Young Offenders. The Burstall Institution is considered as the best reform institution for young offenders today. 
So, pinaka-best ni siya na reform institution for young offenders kini uh, Bryce Sir Evelyn Rogos. Then, Walter Crofton. You know, he is the director of the Irish prison in 1854 who introduced the Irish system that was modified from a Canucci's mark system, progressive states uh, system or Irish system. Then, Jubal Brockway, the director of the Elmer Reformatory in New, New York <coughs> in 1876, who introduced certain innovation, divisional programs like the following uh, training schools type compulsory education of prisoners, casework methods, extensive use of parole, and indeterminate sentence. Then next we have the Elmira Reformatory in 1877, so considered as the forerunner of modern biology because it had all the elements of the modern system as such as uh, training school type, you know, compulsory education for prisoners, casework methods, and indeterminate sentence. So these times, no, and can the reformatory, so din hinang so good ang modern penology, which is among prisoners, uh, i-house sila, then i-provide dan sila og training, no, training school type, i-train among prisoners, then, of, then compulsory education, sa so, tanan jod, then casework methods, tuluan sila ang mga uh, pag-develop sa ilahang mga talents, no, dito sa uh, ilahang personal institution. The next, uh, Jim Jacques Philippe Filial founded the Maison de Force in Gen, uh, Belgium. He introduced uh, felons and misdemeanants should be separated and women and children must be separated quarters. So, muna ang yung introduced. Then next, we have Fred T. Wilkinson, so the last warden of Alcatraz Prison. James Binet, director of Federal Bureau of Prisons, who wrote about the closing of Alcatraz Prison. It opened in 1934, closed on March 31, 1963. But it was costly an operation, but when it closed, it, ha it has 260 inmates. So Alcatraz now a tourist destination in New York. So, so ang Alcatraz na closed na na siya karon. So, next we have Australia. So the place which has been a colony before it became a country. Convicted criminals in England were transported to Australia, a colony of Great Britain, when transportation was adopted in 1790 to 1875. Then classification movement, the movement for modern correctional reform started with the organization of the federal prison system in 1950, placing the penal institution of the United States under the centralized jurisdiction of the Bureau Federal uh, Bureau of Prisons. So next, uh, the two rival prison system in the history. So mo'n siya pinaka-rival nga uh, correction. No? And the history of correction, the, meaning, uh, the U-born prison system, uh, also known as the congregate system. Uh, the prisoners are confined in their own cells during the night and con congregate work in shops during the day. So complete silence was enforced. So can U-born system, ang ilahang pamagi is uh, during the day, no, uh, ang, uh, uh, ang prisoners during uh, confined sa unsa during the night and congregate work in the, in the day. So, I confined sila kung uh, night, then kung adlaw is a uh, work sila. No? Then complete silence. Then next we have the Pennsylvania prison system, so also known as the solitary system. A night where they live, sleep, eat, and receive religious instructions. So, gabi e, baliktad ni ilaha. So, gabi e, so, then, ang complete silence is required. Uh, silence kiapon. Prisoners are required to read the Bible. And prisoners are confined in single cells today. So, single cells sila ayong prisoners tagtagsa. Then, required silang uh, mo read the Bible. No, nindot sa nipit sa na prison. So next, uh, let's move to the concept of punishment. So what is punishment? So punishment, you know, the general concept is that it is the inflection of some sort of pain on the offender for violating the law. So in the legal sense, it is more individual redress or personal revenge. Punishment therefore is defined as the redress that the state takes against an offending member. So. 
tawag siya the inflection of some sort of pain on the offender. So, tawag from the word punishment, I punish, no? Of, I punish ang offender because of uh, violating the law and rules and regulations. Uh, next, we have the contemporary forms of punishment. First is the imprisonment. So, imprisonment, placing offenders in prison for the purpose of protecting the public and at the same time rehabilitating them by requiring the latter to undergo institutional treatment programs. So, in prison. So, ang usak offender, no? Uh, once uh, he is or found guilty of the crimes, so, he uh, add siya sa uh, uh, Bureau of Corrections that on siya sa uh, tawag o i-confine, no? into a prison institution so that the public will be protected no? and, and also so that the offender uh, rehabilitates rin ito para after sa iyong pag-serve siyang sentence no? while well, undergoing uh, and, uh, any treatment in the prison institution so when they uh, back to the society they will become uh, productive and become a law-abiding citizen so next we have parole so, parole defined as the procedure by which prisoners are selected for release on the basis of individual response and progress within their correctional institution and by which they are provided with necessary controls and guidance as they serve the remainder of their sentence within uh, the community. So, kaning parole, uh, mostly any katong mga uh, offenders, no, mga inmates nga serve na sa ilang sentence sa dito sa uh, prison institution, unya nagbinotan sila so na serve nila ang minimum so na apply sila parole so ang daris nila nga sentence is serve na din sa community so of course with the guidance and supervision uh, of the bureau of uh, bureau of correction officer in charge then next we have probation probation it is a procedure under which a defendant after found guilty of a crime is released by the court without imprisonment subject to the condition imposed by the court and subject to the supervision of the probation officer. So, kaning provision, uh, kaning siya, if the offenders uh, are found uh, guilty of a crime, so uh, then the court will allow uh, the inmates or the offenders will serve, uh, kung mag-grant siya sa, sa probation, no? uh, serve niya ang young sentence in the community dili na adto sa prison institution so, but of course with the supervision of the probation officer ang kaning probation then next uh, justification for punishment so retribution so generally means even the perpetrator perpetrator it refers to the theory who put that says of an offender should be punished for the crimes committed because he or she deserves it someone kita or great retribution uh, if the uh, offender no uh, should be fun punished uh, because of the crimes committed and she or he or she deserves it so we need retribution or punishment no? deterrence so it's the justification for punishment no? based on the belief the prevention or discouragement of a crime through fear or danger so, justification of punishment na yung deterrence. Then, specific deterrence is directed toward the individual offender. So, the rationale is that by making the punishment sufficiently unpleasant, the offender would be discouraged from committing violations in the future when a specific deterrence. So, general deterrence is designed to use the offenders to set an example for those who might otherwise consider engaging in the similar criminal acts. So next, we have expiation of atonement. So this was in a form of group vengeance, no? group vengeance, uh, distinguished from retribution, where punishment is exacted publicly for the purpose of appeasing the social group. Uh, next, reformation. No? Society interests can be best served by helping the prisoner become a law-abiding citizen and re uh, and productive upon. His return to the free community by requiring him to undergo intensive rehabilitation in prison. Reformation. So, from the word reformation, a reform in the prison institution, ng sa offender, so that they will be, uh, when they uh, back to the society in the community, they will become a law abiding citizen. 
So, protection is the rehabilitation of criminals and protection of the public go hand in hand. If reformation is achieved, then public is protected. So, protection, of course, uh, in the confinement uh, facilities, of course, the uh, once the offender, the inmates will be housed, of course, the public will be uh, protected no? from the harm of any criminals. So that's it, my dear students. Thank you so much. No, uh, it is uh, uh, maybe it's fast uh, because we uh, uh, just asked the topic. No, and thank you so much for watching. No, for supporting this channel. And before I end, so I would like to say uh, I would like to in, uh, say this uh, positive quotes. No saying that focus on being productive instead of being busy. So today, so I know I believe that uh, we're busy of uh, different uh, schedules, different tasks to comply, you know, to accomplish. So I could say that uh, the best thing to do is to be productive you know, instead of being busy. You know, always be productive every day and I believe being productive will lead you Success will lead to success in the future, in the coming days. So, thank you so much, and let's continue the topic in uh, our next uh, discussion about this topic, the therapeutic modalities or the set three subjects. Thank you so much, and God bless. Bye.